Hey everyone, Declan here from Flight Club. Today I'm going to give you all a quick run through of Flight Club's most popular feature, the Photographer's Toolkit. First of all, what is the Photographer's Toolkit? It is a set of features designed to aid those of you who happen to want to photograph or record a rocket launch, and it's designed for ease of use for amateurs and professionals alike. It can also be used for other stellar events like Starlink trains, ISS passes, etc. But photographing rocket launches is by far the most common use of this toolkit. So let's take a look. From Flight Club's homepage, you can access the toolkit by going to DataViz and then clicking on Photographer's Toolkit. This will take you to a page where you can see the Earth and some user controls at the bottom of the page. To be able to reach this page, you have to have unlocked an applicable tier on Flight Club. More on those tiers towards the end of the video. So hopefully this video will help those of you who want to see what it is exactly that you're paying for before you actually make any payment. So from here, you'll notice this gold menu button in the bottom right. If you click on this, you'll see a bunch of options appear. Let's go from the top. So launch trajectory search lets you choose a mission for which Flight Club has made a trajectory simulation. The missions available here will be all historic missions and usually will also include missions one to two weeks into the future. At the time of making this video, we're currently waiting on SpaceX's SN15 Starship to fly and also for SpaceX's Crew 2 mission. So let's specifically take a look at Crew 2's trajectory. To do so, let's type in Crew and Flight Club will return all missions that have Crew in the name. There's the Crew 2 mission, so let's click on that, give it a second, and the trajectory will appear around the Earth in the background. This entry has also appeared here for Crew 2 with some buttons beside it. The first button, which looks like a clock, will toggle the current time between now and between the launch time of this selected mission. The second button will just refresh the trajectory in case I've made an updated version and you want to fetch the, that updated version without reloading the entire page. And the last button will remove this trajectory from the Earth. Okay, let's move on. The satellite search feature has a similar search function that will let you find a specific object in orbit. For example, we can type in ISS and we'll get back all objects which have that string in their name. Of course, the International Space Station is ISS Zarya, so if we click on this, we see it shows the ISS orbit around the Earth. We can also manually import TLEs here for satellites if the satellite itself isn't found in Flight Club's database. This might happen, say, shortly after a launch, before the payload has been classified, or even before a launch, when we have an estimated TLE and we want to see how that might look. For now, let's move on. The satellite pass panner will combine the satellite search feature with your location to show you visible passes for those satellites over your location. So if our location is, say, Cape Canaveral and we want to spot the ISS, Flight Club will show us the magnitude of the pass, how the weather will be, how dark the sky will be, and the positions of the pass start, the highest point in the sky, and the pass end. Change reference frame is something that you'll probably never use, but essentially what it does is switch between viewing a trajectory from the point of view of somebody standing on a rotating Earth or somebody in space who doesn't rotate with the Earth. The best way to think of why these are different is that if you're standing near a launch pad on the Earth, say in Florida, and a rocket is about to launch, the rocket is of course not moving. However, when viewed from space, the rocket and the launch pad, and indeed all of Florida, are moving west to east at a velocity of over 400 meters per second due to the Earth's spin. In general, it makes more sense to view launches in a non-inertial reference frame, or from the surface of the Earth, and to view orbits in an inertial reference frame, or from space. But like I said, you can leave this alone for 99% of the cases. Okay, now we get to the real photography stuff. Click on Set Camera Equipment to open a dialog where you can specify the specifications of your camera lens, sensor, and the orientation you'll be shooting in. For example, let's say we're shooting a 55mm APS-C in portrait mode. Flight Club will modify the aspect ratio and the field of view of the window to show exactly what that setup would see. Pretty sweet. Now let's set our location. There are a few ways to do this. You can set your location manually using coordinates that you pull from an external source, say Google Maps for instance. You can also choose one of your own private list of favorite locations. This list can be curated in your account page where you can add or remove locations or even change their order in the list to put the more common ones first. Finally, you can use a Google location search to search for an address. The more specific, the better. In this case, let's say we're going to be on Cocoa Beach. The 
This lens looks a bit long. Let's try a shorter one. 18 millimeters fits the entire launch arc in the frame. And landscape looks good too. Visibility maps allow you to plot visibility maps for any launches that you currently have plotted. So first of all, let's zoom out so that we can see the entire east coast of the US here. If you ever need help with how to move around this map, you can always click on the question mark button in the top right for a handy little guide to navigating using mouse controls and touch controls. Okay, now let's open up the visibility maps menu and toggle on the crew two map. Now you can see these circles have appeared, each one labeled with, with a time. This time is how many seconds after launch before the rocket will be visible for a person standing on that circle. Handy if you live in say Northern Florida, Carolina, or anywhere up the East Coast for a rocket launch to the ISS, for example. Finally, we have some extra options in here which we can use to help ourselves out a bit. Most of these will require a page refresh to take effect. Show constellations will show the constellations in the night sky to help you with your orientation. Sun glow will toggle the sun as just the disk or as a large bright area in the sky. Dark night side will toggle between having a light and a dark side of the earth or else having the entire planet light. And Kerbal Mode, well, replaces Earth with Kerbin, because why not? So that's Flight Club's Photographer Toolkit. To see the prices for each tier, head on over to flightclub.io slash pricing, which you can access by clicking on pricing at the top of the main page. This page also includes some kick-ass photos, which have been taken with the help of this very toolkit. And these should give you a good example of just what's possible with the right preparation, and maybe even some ideas for your own shots. That's it for me today. Thanks for checking out the video, and I can't wait to see what amazing things you and your camera can create. Salon lat, August Gurav Mahagut.